two fifteen in the morning, and uh, we're starting a video. So this is the intake manifold for the four rotor. It's uh, currently not one hundred percent assembled. So I don't have the O rings in between the slides and the flange. I don't have a TPS set up on here yet. I don't even have a throttle cable bracket. So basically, I've got to figure all that stuff out right now, and then put this thing on the car so that way we can start this car at some point. So if you all saw the wiring video, we're literally picking up 14 seconds after I shut the camera down and had a slight, you know, breathing, coughing attack right there. But we're going to get this thing sorted. So this is um, some custom work. Defined Auto Works built it. I modified it. Defined did the slides. All custom stuff built. Pretty sweet. Check out the horsepower. Brap, 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 or more like IndyCar Noise 4 Rotor 787B sounds, because my brap braps are more two rotary bridge porty, because that's what I had. So, all the power, not all the power. Anyways, let's get this thing built. I'll show you all the O-rings, I'll show you all how it goes together, and then show you all what I come up with for a throttle position sensor. And then ultimately, in this video, we're going to fire this up. So, get fired up, because we're going to fire this up. But we got a little work to do first, you know, like prime the oil system and build the rest of the intake manifold and hook up a O2 sensor, build an intake air temperature sensor mount, mount the fans, put the the alternator belt on, put coolant in the car, make a heater line, hook up the power steering, hook up the power steering pump, and we need to do an alignment. So we've got all that stuff that we have to do, and it is less than 48 hours from when we have to leave for deals gap. So looking at this intake manifold, I've got the slides off here. You can see open -y, horsepower -y, closey. There's little O-rings in here and I just put these in. One of the things that I just now notice about this is these O-rings don't stand very proud out of this aluminum, meaning I'm a little worried that when I just bolt this down that the O-ring's not gonna seal. So I'm gonna go ahead and just throw some RTV on here. Um, basically just around the O-ring, just a little bead of it. I don't think it's going to be that crazy. Ultimately, it's going to help hold the O-ring in, but you know, I wish the O-rings would stick out just a little further. These O-rings are really thin. So I just want to ensure that this doesn't seal. You know, one thing that we did do whenever Herb welded this is he clamped this thing down to his welding fabrication table. So he has like a really trick, one of those tables with all the holes in it, you know. And then, you know, you kind of have to, when you weld thin aluminum to thick aluminum like this these little tubes to this literal like three eighths of an inch thick flange the flange is going to want to warp when you start getting that much heat in it so he had it clamped down it is just a little bit warped but it was also just a little bit warped before we started you know putting this together and where you really notice it is like the corners so when you tighten this side down it kind of pushes that side up and ultimately there's enough bolts in here that it should pull itself all the all the way tight, but I just hate tightening stuff into aluminum super tight, especially with a steel bolt. You're just going to blow the threads out, and then you're just down a whole other rabbit hole of things you didn't want to have to fix at, you know, 2 in the morning. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bead of silicone around these so I don't leak, bolt this thing together, and then we can look at getting the TPS mounted to this deal and getting a throttle cable bracket set up. Okay, so I've got this deal tight, but when it's tight, so is the slide, because I think, like, this is inoperable with a throttle pedal. There's no way you could do this. So I think, like, an inherent flaw of this is these giant plates of aluminum. I don't think that there's really going to be, like, a super good way to get this all not to be warped. So... What I'm thinking, obviously the silicone, obviously the RTV and me tightening it down, not the best solution. Y'all probably won't be able to see it on camera, but when I hold this thing up to the light, like I have these bolts, I was using a C-clamp to clamp this together so I didn't blow the threads out of one of these five millimeter bolts, but I clamped it down and worked these bolts in from the center out and then went all the way around until, you know, they're all tight, tight. Tighter than I want them to be, honestly, for the size of the bolt. And it's still loose. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do, because there's still like 
Y'all can't see it, but I can see daylight through here. So I got to get some paper gasket and I'm going to have to make a paper gasket for this because the paper, you know, it's like a universal comedic roll of gasket material will allow for the two pieces of aluminum to be warped and not put a ton of unneeded stress in them. So that'll give me a bigger thickness to make up for the warpage. The thing that sucks though is that I don't have enough paper gasket material to make one that's this long and there's really no way I guess I don't really I don't even have enough to make four individual ones for each thing but there's really no way for me to like hold them all in here because there's no studs or anything so it's kind of going to be a pain in the butt so we're going to have o-ring rtv paper gasket rtv sandwich between all this because like I just can't I mean it takes like, you're going to have to be, you know, Thor or something who's got heavy feet in the movies and stuff. I don't know. Come save me, Tom Cruise, because this thing is just, like, you're going to have to be a beast to get this thing to work right. And, uh, you know, it's just not going to, it's just not going to jive. So, paper gasket it is, which... I mean, we're in a in a four rotor. I mean, every Weber carburetor ever is mounted with a paper gasket. I mean, some of them are O-rings, but a lot of my stuff was like the big thick paper gaskets. So we will resume with paper gaskets. I went down to the parts store and I got some like, and I got some universal just gasket material. So this stuff's actually pretty thick. It's probably, there we go, 0.060 inches thick. This stuff here, which is... 130 seconds of an inch, but this is normally what I would usually use for like intake manifolds, intake manifold gaskets when I don't have one in stock or whatever, right? For like a turbo two or something, upper intake manifold. So the thicker gasket, my goal is that I don't have to tighten this as tight. So I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave the O-rings in here and I've cleaned all the little bit of RTV off I laid these on here and with a razor blade I port matched these holes so they're fit so they'll fit so they shouldn't be an obstruction to the airflow. The one thing to note is that the actual flange here for the intake manifold versus what we're just going to call the slides of the throttle body. So the flange is actually just a tad bit smaller than the throttle body. So my gaskets match the throttle body which are bigger. So I'm going to lay this on here, these two gaskets, and basically put this back together. And the whole goal is that I don't have to tighten this as tight, and I can kind of let that warp be made up in the gasket. Because when I had it really tight, in order to fit the two aluminum pieces together, it was, you know, bound up. So like right here, the slides move super easy with no stress on them. So we're just going to try to, to get to that point. Um... That'd be the goal. But I'm kind of surprised that like, you know, clamping all that down that these thick, thick pieces of aluminum move that much, but it could have, you know, I don't know. I guess the tolerances in this slide are actually probably pretty tight. So I can't tell if it's a steel middle or a three sheets of aluminum. I feel like the middle of this is steel. Well, that was a neat break in the action for the old Eclipse. The path to totality here in Indiana, but we got more important things to do, which is four rotor. Here is the intake manifold ready to rock. So we've got intake air temperature sensor just mounted here temporarily. Once we put filters on this, we'll put that inside the filter. TPS bracket and return spring bracket connected to the slide throttle actuator. Cable also on the slide throttle actuator. So in previous video, I mentioned that this TPS is actually going to be the limit of what is full throttle on this because the slide has more throw than the TPS that I had. What I did is set it up so that the throttle cable will bottom out first before the TPS reaches the end of its throw. In addition, this thing, you're going to have to go to leg day for your right foot. The left foot for the clutch is going to be so easy, your right leg is going to be tough. But that's going to be full kill right there. 
So just for now, if we need more, if we need more beans, we want more horsepower, we want more wide open, then we will redesign it so that we can get more power out of this thing. I don't know how much power it's going to make just with this at 100% TPS versus it all the way open, so we'll find out. But get amped. It's ready to go on the car now. So I've got vacuum hoses here and here, ready to be teed together there and there on rotor three and four. And then I've got the car prepped and ready to go. So the wiring's all done, as you all saw in the previous video, or at least it's ready to be tested. So this is actually two, or well, three uh, 13BRE Cosmo gaskets that are cut, and I taped them together. The tape isn't actually touching anything on either side, so it shouldn't affect the gasket at all. But this is our nice paper gasket here. So get fired up for that i went ahead and put that heat wrap stuff on the wiring harness right here so everything's all protected we're ready to and i'm ready to drop this deal on here we're almost to the moment we have all been waiting for and that's hearing this thing run but first we need oil i've got the oil line off here this is the end of the filter so this should fill all the coolers up when I pour a bunch of oil down into this, I'm also going to pull off the out from the filter, which runs to the rear iron, and I'm going to fill that line full of oil as well because it's super long. In addition, I might just go ahead and drop some oil down in the dash 10 fitting on the back of the iron as well. And then I'm going to try to so prime this line here from the filter that feeds our two center bearings. So I'm not really going to be able to like fill that whole system completely up but i want to just get as much oil in these lines as possible before i start it with the stock oil pump you know i've had issues before on my car with the stock oil pump when i first put the engine together that it was a little too dry and i couldn't get it to make oil pressure i just couldn't but while cranking usually you can get them to make three psi cranking and then you're like okay we got oil in the engine we're good we can fire this up but in most cases i really don't want to start it until I get oil, you know, circulating. And I really don't want to sit here just cranking on it and cranking on it and cranking on it until the oil pump sucks the oil up. So we're going to go ahead, prime all these lines, get the tank, get the oil pan full of oil. I really don't know how many quarts this thing's going to want to take, but with these big oil coolers plus the bigger pan, I'm really thinking probably like five, five and a half quarts probably versus your normal like two rotor rotaries four and a half quarts or four and three quarter quarts depending on how much you run in it and hopefully we can hear this thing pop off very shortly so i got block off plates on for the omp and for the two turbo drains front and back the engine should be completely sealed up we've got a drain plug in there now and literally it's uh it's ready to run aside from this coolant hose right here and then just setting up the accessories and putting water in it so it's uh i've been taking my time on this thing guys because i don't want to mess this up i really want everything just to go well so checking boxes rechecking boxes checking everything over making sure it's perfect in addition i've got vacuum lines hooked up right here and here so these two rotors that go to the booster right there that feeds the booster over there so currently we're set up on TPS tuning, so not map-based tuning. I want to try to start it on that and see if it works, see if I can figure that out. If not, then I'll tee in a vacuum line and run it to the in and run it to the engine. But I feel like I should be able to figure it out just like with how the table is working. And it's gonna look just like a map-based table when you rev it, except it'll just have TPS percent and RPM instead of instead of fat pressure and RPM. So we're in A. I think it should be good. The only stuff that's gonna be just a little tricky, I guess. It's just like right when you stab the throttle, like playing with the acceleration enrichment. So, but I can tune carburetors, so we can probably get this thing fired up. Attached to some clear tubing, attached to an adapter, attached to a thing, attached to my funnel, attached to an adapter, attached to another tube, attached to my funnel. And now I can turn it on and feed oil into the center bearing main feed areas. So it's overflowing and I got to not make a big mess. It's coming out the rear iron. That's why it's taking so much oil. Okay. Ooh. Well, I don't see a huge puddle on the ground yet, so I guess it's holding it. All right. 
it's time to finally try to start this thing. So we've got the entirety of the Tennessee Deals Gap drunks on the phone here. So everybody say hello to the YouTube video. Hello. You can see everybody on there. We have a whole audience. So uh, we're going to crank this with the fuel pump off and then try to start it. So let's see how it sounds. All right, we've got oil pressure, so that's a win. Oh, let's put the fuel pump back on. Fuel pump's connected. All right. Moment of truth, it should start. Assuming we have everything correct, we had oil pressure. I'm just gonna hit the key and let it kind of fire and then shut it back off. It started, and now it's smoking out my shop. <laughs> you guys aren't even excited over here. I couldn't hear you hooting and hollering. You couldn't hear it? Okay. Well, it started, just so you know. All right, guys, it's time to load this up. This video has been hectic because... Well, I'm exhausted. I've been out in the shop till literally four in the morning, like three nights in a row. So car's good. I've got to get a shorter alternator belt because where the alternator is tight right now, it actually hits the hood. So I'm like maxed out on my adjustment, which you guys didn't see me make that bracket, but that bracket's basically two 12A alternator tensioners that I cut one apart and then cut another one apart, welded them together to make this. And it works literally perfectly the offset was perfect everything laid out nicely but for now everything seems to be working i idled the car and ran the car as you guys saw holding temperature i've got a small water leak at one of the heater lines so which we're going to address that when we get to deals gap just put an actual hose clamp on it versus one of the pinch compression clamps that it would have came with and i think we should be good but uh tape measure alignment by yours truly and it's close enough that I think it's holding its oil, it's making good oil pressure. So it should drive on the trailer. Hopefully, you might have to do some tuning. What do you think? This will be your second time or third time hearing it fire I have up. One question before yeah. this car moves: uh -huh. Are the lug nuts tight? No, they're not. Good call. Okay, we probably should torque them because I just put <laughs> yeah. them on with the impact. Yeah, we should check those. <laughs> we ought to tighten the lug nuts. Just send it. Okay. Oh, I didn't get my laptop. Oh, well, we'll do it without the tune. Do you want the laptop? No, we'll just try it. If it's pissed, then we'll change it. Okay. That works. I definitely 
I, oh, did I slide off or no? No. Okay, I'm still on it? Yeah. Okay, I thought I slid off. No, you're good. Okay, all right. Well, then I'm just gonna like carry my momentum and go right up. I think the front lip will be fine. Pardon me? Yeah, or maybe just like stay here to keep the, if it tries hey, to slide and fall. Roll the window down, push from the window opening. I mean, you'll, I'm more worried about the car sliding off the ramp sideways oh. than me getting up, you know what I mean? Headlight covers are on and tight. What would you think of my adjustment? My headlight cover adjustment. I didn't look at it. Oh, I think they're pretty good. I've not seen it with the hood shut. We got, well, we got to lo loosen the alternator belt. Let me do that. The Radix 7 should just phew, right up here. So that's a big win. Wait, they yeah, look good. See this one? I'm pretty sure this side's always been like this. Yeah. But they they screw here and here and here and here. So you can't go that way without mm -hmm. like moving the whole thing. But honestly, it's not that bad. It's just when you like stand here and you see both of them and you're like, eh, that gap sucks. <laughs> that just, but like this high. gap's perfect, it you know? I wouldn't want to move the hood. Yeah. I'd have to move the headlight. Yeah. Dope. Whew. That's huge accomplishment right there. It drove itself on the trailer. <laughs> All right, let's get the other one out. Rad X7's turn. Y'all just getting to see, hey, four rotor runs for the first time and everything loading up for for deals gap so this is the rad x7 if you're new to the channel which is my single turbo 2000 pounds 334 or 328 horsepower 1979 mazda rx7 fuel tech ft450 it's got all the goodies I'd say it's ready to shred. It's the most expensive trailer load you've had yet. Yeah. That's for sure. It should make it longer than it did last year. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. I was trying to figure out what happened last year. I couldn't remember. Yeah. Sick. You can just, I don't need video of me strapping the car down. You know, these guys don't want to see the cars get strapped down. They want to see Heck all of it. We're just going to call that at the end of the video. I'm going to strap these down. We'll see you guys at Deals Gap. Keep it rad. Huge shout out to Calvin and Matt, though, for coming out and uh, supervising me. Yeah, loading I, up say, these I cars. didn't do anything, so. so. <laughs> Peace, guys. We'll see you at the Gap.